this season, I think our primary theme is toxic masculinity. Talk about big balls. Yeah, well, I bet you're shriveled up a little bit on account of him getting a jump on you again. Against femininity and power, female power. OK, Sailor, what are you going to cost me? Excuse me. Roy and the toxic masculinity that he represents and the women who are going to rise up against him and everyone in his orbit becomes not just a psychological power struggle, but it really escalates to a siege and a war. <laughs> oh. Oh. Jesus. It's a really interesting exploration about how humans perceive other humans and how power can be unbearably dangerous, but also if it's given to the right heart and head, then actually it can be used to save lives. Lady, uh, honey, is that you? Roy is, in many ways, a pragmatist and understands that the system that he lives in at the moment is very much beneficial to him. What you need to know is that I am the law of the land. Freedom. Amen. He needs to maintain that system and has no qualms about bending the laws that don't apply to him to make sure that that is the case. Roy Tillman never forgets a friend. And we're friends, aren't we, darling? Yes, Roy. People are terrified of being on the wrong side of him because he's got all the guns and all the power and has no fear of about using them. Fuck it. Roy demonstrates his power physically. I think it's like the rule of Roy, really. It's kind of whatever he says goes. Pass me to Bowman. You didn't have to send him to babysit me. Just give him the damn phone. You know, if you rule with physical threat, there's almost always someone that can out-threaten you. And I think that's what Roy ends up running into. You want freedom with no responsibility. And there's only one person on Earth who gets that, yeah. Hmm. The president. A baby. I think it's fun to explode that myth of the solitary Western, usually white male hero. It's become such a paradigm in American culture particularly because it has been romanticized so much. But the reality of it is lonely and sad and mostly unfulfilled, I think. You learn a lot from this season about America and what's going on in America. It's set in 2019, Trump's America. Whether you're pro or against Trump, it's a compelling time. And it's hopefully holding up a mirror to not only toxic masculinity, but also a kind of world gone mad, actually. What's the world coming to is all I'm saying. Neighbor against neighbor. I think the show has an insight on us dealing with the primal sins of what has caused the inequality, what has caused the hatred, what has caused the war of man against woman. We need to wake up here, protect ourselves. In case... In case what? In case Mr. Abernathy decides he wants revenge. Or a thousand other maybes. Who? Scotty's math teacher. The fellow I tased before the cop. You, you tased the math teacher? Ultimately, Fargo is a story of America. The Americans we were, the Americans we want to be. But I do think that this conversation that we're having, you know, it's a fluid conversation. Last school board meeting I ever do. I hope that it makes people talk about things that might be uncomfortable, too. There's definitely a conversation to be had about domestic violence that I think is a really important one. And hopefully, things in the world progress in a kinder and more positive way. Gator, there's a baby in this house. I saw her. She's like nine. Now get your ass in that car. Let's go. This is a loving portrait of a place and a people who I am very fond of. But what strikes me as interesting is that in the first few years, there was always a moment where the worst person in the show said, I'm the victim here. And I do feel like reality has reflected something of the het, where suddenly the people who are yelling the loudest and are the most heavily armed are the ones who are saying, I'm the victim here. And so it's strange to interact fictionally with an America that is becoming increasingly more fictional.